In this video, we will be discussing section 4-4, part 3, day 2, solving quadratics by factoring, where it's not already set equal 0. First, let's review the steps you would have to follow to solve. The first thing you need to do is solve to set the equation equal 0. Then, you are going to determine the two numbers that multiply to C and add to B. If C is positive, the numbers are going to have the same sign. So they're both positive and both negative. And if C is negative, then they're going to have different signs. So it could either be the first one's positive and the second one's negative, or the first one's negative and the second one's positive. Then you're going to fill the terms into the factors. So filling in the blanks, set both factors equal 0. And then you're going to solve the two equations separately, giving you two answers. Now, in this first example, we'll notice that the biggest thing is that the equation is not already in standard form because we know that quadratic should always be in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 in order to solve. So in order to do this, I need to move that 7 over. So to move the 7 over, I can add 7 to both sides. So this 7 cancels, which gives us x squared minus 8x plus 7 equals 0, keeping it in that same format like we're used to, with the x squared, then the x, then the number. Now you can solve just like you normally did for the other problems. So we want to determine which numbers multiply to 7 and add to negative 8. So if I list the numbers that multiply to 7. If I do 7 divided by 1 gives me positive 7 and 7 divided by negative 1 gives you negative 7. Now 7 divided by 2 gives you a decimal so it doesn't work and neither does the negative version. 7 divided by 3 gives you a decimal so it doesn't work and neither does the negative version. 7 divided by 4 gives you a decimal so it doesn't work and neither does the negative version. 7 divided by 5 gives you a decimal so it doesn't work and neither does the negative version. And 7 divided by 6 gives you a decimal, so it doesn't work, and neither does the negative version. The next number we would check would be 7, which is already here, meaning all our possibilities are listed. So if we want to check which number adds to equal negative 8, we're going to add straight across. So if I add the 1 plus 7 gives us a value of 8, and if I add the negative 1 and negative 7 gives us a value of negative 8, meaning that the pair of numbers that adds to equal that negative 8 is the last pair of negative 1 and negative 7. So if I rewrite this and fill in the factors, so my x with the blanks, I'm going to use these numbers in the blanks. So I first can fill in my first number, which is negative 1. So it would be x minus 1 as our first term. Then my next factor, I'm going to fill in the second number, which is minus 7. So this becomes x minus 7. So my full equation in factored form is x minus 1 times x minus 7. Now, lastly, we're going to solve by setting both equal 0. So I can set the x minus 1 equal 0 and the x minus 7 equals 0. So in order to solve the equation on the left, I'd add 1 to both sides. So it gives us x equals 1. And for the equation on the right, you would add 7 to both sides. So it gives you x equals 7, giving us our two equations, which we can rewrite as x equals 1 or 7. For our next example, we'll notice that our equation is not in standard form again because it should be ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Now in order to move the 5x to the same side as the rest of the terms, I'm going to have to add 5x to both sides. However, when I do this, I need to make sure I rewrite my terms in order because normally we have the x squared terms first. So I can write 
x squared. Then we would put the x term, which would be my 5x. And then lastly, we would have the c value, which is just a number, so it's 4. So I have x squared plus 5x plus 4 equals 0. Now I'm going to factor like I normally would for the other problems. So if I figure out which numbers multiply to 4 and add to 5, I'm going to list all of my possibilities. So if I want to figure out which numbers multiply to 4, if I do 4 divided by 1 gives me positive 4, 4 divided by negative 1 gives me negative 4, then 4 divided by 2 gives me positive 2, and 4 divided by negative 2 gives me negative 2. Now we've already covered all the possibilities, so we can move on to the next part, because our next number would be 3, which is greater than this 2. So if I want to check which of these numbers add to equal 5, we're going to add each pair of numbers. So if I add the 1 and 4, it gives me a value of 5. The negative 1 and negative 4 equals negative 5. The 2 and 2 equals 4. And the negative 2 and negative 2 equals negative 4. So if I'm picking out which numbers add to equal 5, the only pair that works is the first two numbers of 1 and 4. So if I rewrite this as my factors, I'm going to fill in these numbers into the blanks. So my first number I have is the 1. So I can fill in a 1. And since there's no signs, imply that it's plus 1 in the first blank. And then the second number is 4. So I can fill in my 4. And again, since there's no sign, we imply that it's plus 4. Now I have my two factors, so I can set them both equal, 0, and solve. So if I do that, it gives me x plus 1 equals 0, and x plus 4 equals 0. So if I solve the equation on the left, I can subtract 1 from both sides, giving us x equals negative 1. And for the equation on the right, I would subtract 4 from both sides, giving us x equals negative 4. So our two answers are negative 1 and negative 4, which we can rewrite as x equals negative 1 or negative 4. In our last example, we'll notice that our equation really isn't in standard form because the x squared is all by itself. So in order to change it into this ax squared plus bx plus c, format, we're going to move each term over. So if I want to do that, I'm going to subtract 3x and subtract 18. So the 18 and the 3x cancel. Now if I'm rewriting this in order, I'm going to put the x squared term first. So it becomes x squared. Then I'll put the x term, which is minus 3x. And then the c term, which is just a number, so it's minus 18 equals 0. Now I'm going to factor and solve like I normally would. So we want to determine which numbers multiply to negative 18 and add to negative 3. So if I were to do that, I'm first going to list the numbers that multiply to negative 18. So if I do that, negative 18 divided by, negative, by positive 1 is negative 18. Negative 18 divided by the negative version of negative 1 is positive 18. Then I can check negative 18 divided by 2 is negative 9. Then negative 18 divided by negative 2 is positive 9. Then I have negative 18 divided by 3 is negative 6. And negative 18 divided by negative 3 is positive 6. Negative 18 divided by 4 is a decimal, so it doesn't work, neither with the negative version. Negative 18 divided by 5 is a decimal, so it doesn't work, and neither is the negative version. And then we're back to 6. So we have all the possibilities listed. So if we want to check which set adds to equal 
negative 3, we're going to add each pair. So if I add the 1 and negative 18, it gives you negative 17. The negative 1 and eight, negative 18, or negative 1 and positive 18, gives us positive 17. 2 and negative 9 gives you negative 7. Negative 2 and 9 gives you 7. 3 and negative 6 gives you negative 3. And negative 3 and 6 gives you positive 3. So the set of numbers that adds to equal that value of negative 3 is the second to last pair of 3 and negative 6. So if I rewrite my expression in factored form, so x with the blank, x with the blank equals 0, you're going to fill in the values for, that you selected. So since I have the first number is a 3, I can fill in a 3, and since there's no sign, we assume it's positive. And then the second number we had was negative 6. So I can fill in a minus 6, giving us that our factored form is x plus 3 and x minus 6. Now lastly, to solve, we have to set both of these factors equal 0. So I can say x plus 3 equals 0, and x minus 6 equals 0. So in order to solve the first equation, I would subtract 3. So you would get x equals negative 3. And the second equation, you would add 6. So you would have x equals positive 6, giving us our two answers which we can rewrite as x equals negative 3 or 6 as our final answer.